What is the most common software used in chemical engineering? Coming up next. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both students and professionals. So don't hesitate and click in the notification bell so you get all my latest videos. Now, you're probably wondering what type of software is being used in the chemical engineering industry. As you can imagine, there is a lot of software out there that may be or not used by the chemical engineer. And probably you're wondering which one is worth the training or the learning, which one is the standard in certain type of industries, and which one is not even worth trying out. For this, I prepare a list of the most common type of software that you will encounter as a chemical engineer. And yes, guys, Excel is in the list, make no worries. But seriously, guys, I prepared this list in order of popularity. And of course, it will really depend on which type of engineering roles you have and what type of calculations or what type of activities or tasks you are having in the day to day. But this is a general list for the general public of engineers or general engineering public. Mm -hmm. The top software for chemical engineers. And yes, of course, guys, the almighty Excel will be the very first one that I will be adding to the list. Actually, you could in theory say that any spreadsheet software could be in the first place, but Excel is the most classical one. I know that we are in 2022, but yet engineers are still using Excel. Can you believe it? To be honest, Excel is one of my favorite tools. It's simple, it's powerful, and you can get a lot of things done. This can be used in most fields of engineering. Actually, I would say that in almost all fields of engineering, depending on the applications or the calculations, of course. You may be using this as databases. You may be using this as a calculator. You could be using this tool for a unit operation design or so. The second software is very used by engineers that need to present results. To be honest, guys, we know that engineers are very, very bad in communication skills. So PowerPoint is a great alternative to be there and presenting results. You don't need to write in the whiteboard or maybe in any paper. You just present your slideshow and hopefully you get through the meeting without any problem. I will say that one of the most important things to know about PowerPoint is to be able to connect PowerPoint and Excel. So you can get all the Excel data to your presentation and of course, other type of software. For instance, Aspen Software has some interaction between PowerPoint and Excel, so you may want to bring that as well. If you're using MATLAB or if you're using other type of softwares that I'm going to be mentioning here, you can make them interact between each other and have a great presentation of results. And yes, so simple PowerPoint can allow you to present a lot of great results to your team, to your boss, to your clients, or to your suppliers. The third one, Visium, especially if you are using plug flow diagrams or maybe block diagrams or overall any type of diagram that you want to show. It's a very simple tool, yet powerful. It will allow you to show rapidly the type of processes or scheme that you want to prepare. Maybe move the separator, maybe move a heat exchanger, see what happens, piping, etc. I know that there are other type of software that are dedicated towards pipe and instrumentation diagram, but I really think that Visio offers a lot of things, especially simplicity. As stated before, Excel is great for a lot of calculations, but sometimes you need to make very crazy graphs or maybe you need to work with matrices or maybe you need to solve very complex differential equations or many other type of mathematical problems. When this happens, you can jump and use MATLAB, the almighty tool for mathematics. Now, MATLAB has a lot of applications. It will be almost impossible. Actually, I'm thinking of making a video on how to use MATLAB in engineering overall, but you can use this as a math equation, math solver, a graphing tool, maybe use this in statistics. You can solve differential equations and much more. And yes, eventually we had to come to Aspen Tech Software. You know, I'm a great fan of that software itself, the Aspen Plus and Aspen HiSys. But of course, you have a lot of tools within Aspen Tech. Actually, I think there's up to 10, 15, maybe 20 products in Aspen Tech Software offerings. So definitely there is a solution for you. Now, what I want to treat here is specifically the process simulation software that these are used extensively throughout the industries. If we are talking about oil and gas or maybe fine chemicals or maybe even bulk chemicals, Aspen Tech is most likely going to be there. You can use the software for simulation, for optimization, for planning, for what if scenarios, for scaling up a plant, scaling down a product, use the analysis tools, maybe even check out thermodynamic packages, and maybe even be able to model your own user models. 
After all, we could say that Aspen Tech is the golden standard for process simulation software in chemical engineering. And of course, there are other process simulation tools, for instance, Unisim, CamCAD, the open source DWSIM, Coco Simulator, Pro2, and much more tools. These are great because, of course, they focus in all the little details that Aspen Tech cannot attend. So these are great alternatives if you are into process engineering. And to be honest, guys, many times you will have no option. The company will be working with Unisim or maybe with Pro2 or maybe with open source software. And yes, technically speaking, the process simulation software I presented before are AutoCADs because they are computer aided design software, but I wanted to separate this one from the previous ones. There's a lot of AutoCAD software, but more importantly, you are going to be using these for piping systems, equipment, and pipe and instrumentation diagrams. Now, if you're lucky enough, you will be able to work with SAP or Oracle. These are the so-called ERP or Enterprise Resource Planning Tools, which are essentially huge monsters that allow you to have control of all the plants, of all the resources, of all the raw materials, all the partially finished materials, and all the final products, all the resources, from around the plant should be controlled via that software. And I say lucky because many times the process engineer will not be actually working with those software, but sometimes you will be able to work. So regarding on your actual role or responsibility in the company, you may or not work with this type of software. Programming, and I know that this is a topic for a single video alone. There's a lot of programming languages that may be used in engineering. Sometimes on chemical engineering, you will have several niche applications depending on what you're doing. But overall, we could say that we have two main streams of programming languages. Number one, BVA or Visual Basics applications. And if you want to get more hardcore, Python. Of course, there's C++, C++, C Sharp, and much more. But right now, I will say that Python and BVA are the most important ones. So if you want to learn more about programming languages for chemical engineers, stay tuned for future videos. Some other honorable mentions that I want to make are heat transfer software, for instance, HDRI. This is very useful for designing and costing equipment on heat transfer overall. Pipeflow, SolidWorks, Comsol, and ANSYS. And finally, guys, this last section is a specific software that you will be learning in your specific industry. Depending on whether you're working in a chemical plant or maybe in a manufacturing plant, you may be using a special software depending on the type of equipment that you're using. For instance, if you're working in a chemical plant, most likely you're going to have a control panel. And that control panel is, of course, not using Windows 10. It's going to be using several types of software that has all the connections of all the sensors, all the actuators, all the controllers, all the PLCs, all the equipment such as pumps, reactors, pipes, heaters, piping, valves, and so on. And this type of software must be learned because you want to understand what happens if you click here, what happens if you click on that button, what if you want to learn more about certain condition, how to get to there what are these menus for, and so on. Many times you will need to learn how to work with a PLC, which is of course, once again, not using Windows. It will have their specific software. Sometimes you will be working with a docking station, which has its own unique user interface, and they have several things going on, and you will need to learn that as well. And that's it guys, a quick list on the software used in the chemical engineering industry. I hope I didn't miss some important software, but if you think I did, please let us know in the comment section what software you think is very, very important and I didn't include in the list. And of course, if you think one of the software that I mentioned is outdated and is not that much used in the industry anymore, please let us know as well. I hope that this video encouraged you to take action and to learn or get trained in certain type of software. For instance, something very simple as Excel or something more complicated as Aspen Tech software which by the way, I have special training if you want to check them out. On my behalf guys, that will be it. I'll see you in the next video.